What's good with the gang? What's good with the squad? What's good with the nation? You already know what time it is, man. We about to hop into some more Toronto info, man. The history of the Toronto Driftwood Crips. So if you're a real one, man, and you already tapped into the other ones, man, we about to get into this one right here, man. So without further ado, spark you one up, man, and tap in. Let's get it. If I ask someone to think about a dangerous neighborhood in Toronto, they usually think about a place like Jane and Finch. You've heard about it before. It's just been a notorious high crime neighborhood for decades now. The Driftwood Crips are part of that reason. They originate from Driftwood Avenue, a bendy, windy street that runs north and south of Finch, Driftwood Avenue, Jane Street. It's a big area with a ton of different buildings and complexes some community housing. This is basically the stomping grounds and the turf for the Driftwood Crips gang. They've been around for decades, causing havoc in their area. Now, let's take a look back at the origins and the founding of this gang. The Driftwood Crips were originally created with heavy influence from Jamaican subculture, roots from the immigration of people coming into Canada, the West Indies, and the Caribbean in the early 1980s, onwards to the late 1980s. <coughs> At the time, over half of all immigrants in Canada were from this region. For those who chose to come to Toronto, most settled down in communities within the inner city like Regent Park, but they began to spread out as new housing options geared to low-income families became. Shout out to Regent Park, man. Shout out to Driftwood, man. The history of this shit, man, is crazy. Like, I didn't even know they, you know what I'm saying, came from Jamaica. And you know what I'm saying? That's, that's probably why it's so, like, when you when you hear that when you hear music and shit, it's more, you know what I'm saying. It's, it's up, you know what I'm saying. It's up there. The energy in the music, you can tell, real deal. By the late 1980s, the Jane and Finch area itself and Driftwood Avenue would now be home to thousands of immigrants. It's somewhere around this time that the youth from the area collaborated and founded the Driftwood Crips gang. When they initially created the gang, all of the Driftwood Crips were on the same side. North and South, also called Up Top and Down Bottom Driftwood, both claimed Driftwood Crips, with members totaling well in the hundreds. The gang quickly established themselves by selling drugs in the area and gaining rivalries with other gangs, introducing a new level of violence to the neighborhood. But as time went on, things would soon change within the Driftwood Crips hierarchy. In the early 1990s, the Down Bottom Driftwood Crips had a problem with another Crips in the city, the Rexdale Crips. Rexdale is an area a short distance west of Driftwood, which is also home to a few different Crips gangs. Now, the Down Bottom Driftwood Crips began feuding with the Rexdale Crips after they would constantly clash at events, clubs, and parks in the area. Soon they had enough of the run gang and figured their enemies and their Crips we might as well be blood. So if you're a real one, what really like them being at them events and going to them parties, you know what I'm saying? What really made them, you know what I'm saying, just collide to this clash, like fuck it, you know what I'm saying? It's bloodshed, you know what I'm saying? Now it's for decades, you know? What really made that impactful moment to just stamp it, just, just pure beef, you know? Killing beef at that, it's, it's been going up. So, so the members of the Down Bottom Driftwood Crips started to identify themselves as Bloods. Naturally, this created tension with the Driftwood Crips from up top, and so a civil war ensued, transforming all of Driftwood into a war zone. The aftermath, the gang not only splitting up into up top Crips and Down Bottom Bloods, but East Side also divided into little subsets. This division of the gang is still present to this day. You can see it by the amount of reported shootings in Driftwood in the usual year. The shootings are a combination of other gangs as well as the civil feuds between themselves. Man. Now we can fast forward a little bit over a decade. The Driftwood Bob Tom have grown as a gang. They now spark new beef with gangs like the Connection Bloods, the Lanes Crew, Arthur Bloods, Shock Farm Bloods, Jungle City Goons, Five Point Generals. And continue the decade long feud with the rest of the Crips. The community is now composed of not only just a majority of Caribbeans, but a bunch of other ethnicities as well. 
the crime in the area over the years quickly caught the focus of the police. And in the mid-2000s, they began launching investigation into the gang. This investigation was going on for 11 months, and it suddenly escalated after a 15-year-old boy, Jordan Manners, was shot to death inside a school in the Jane and Finch area. Damn! Jeffries in May of 2007. This involved an issue of youth violence in the neighborhood, specifically Driftwood and the Crips gang, and so the police wanted to crack down on the gang fast. In June of 2007, just one month after Jordan Manners' death, police launched Project Cryptic. Over 700 Project law enforcement orchestrated a series of raids and search warrants on over 130 vehicles and residences. Damn, but also in some other locations that were associated with the gang. In total, 95 alleged members were arrested. 69 men, 21 women, and 5 young offenders. More than 700 charges were laid to the group. And the police seized drugs valued over 1 million, over 35 guns, and $220,000 in cold hard cash. Oh, yeah, they were Ironically, one of those among the rest is Jordan Manor's older sister, Nicole Small, but that wasn't the only rare find during the raid. The police also apprehended what they believed to be the three leaders of the Driftwood Crips at the time, what they dubbed the Three Generals. The Generals consisted of three brothers, Michael Johnson, 30, Peter Johnson, 24, and Nadal Johnson, 23. The oldest, Michael, known to be a top supplier of cocaine and driftwood. Although police claim he ran the driftwood crypts, he himself didn't live there. He lived at Bathurst and Steele's, methodically staying in the shadows. Before he left, got be. the youngest brother, Nagel, is said to have been trying to ally with the Jamestown Crips, which are a subset in Rexdale, and ended the Toronto OB. There's nothing to show that this attempt was successful. One of the craziest parts of the investigation is that six of the people arrested during the raids actually worked at the Toronto Pearson International Airport. Police say that these employees worked in the cargo and ramp area, and that they were involved in the importation of drugs into the country. It just shows you how intricate this gang really Yeah, they was moving strategic as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Moving swiftly through it. When you when you when you smart with it and you put your mind to it. Hey, look what you, you know what I'm saying? Look what can happen. You can start a whole goddamn enterprise, a whole goddamn war, a whole goddamn whatever when you, you know, want some real shit. Uh, that's, this is like real information right here, you know what I'm saying? That it's just like, this shit is it's history, you know what I'm saying? That's why it's called the history of Toronto Driftwood Cribs, you know what I'm saying? Like, Crazy man, shout out to the gang. Make sure you hit that like, man. Let's get it. Was and what kind of connections they have? The police charged the members with heavy offenses, aiming for long sentences, and in essence, to fully dismantle the gang. Having them not only the top three players of the gang, but incarcerating 95 other members, let the police feel like a mission was accomplished, at least for a while. Bill Blair, who was the chief of Toronto Police at the time, flaunted the fact that he had the members of the gang's leadership in custody and boasted that the city had one less street gang to worry about. Now we get into the 2010s. This crazy motherfucker. Despite the large rate of the police in 2007, Driftwood Crips are still flourishing more than ever. The introduction of platforms like YouTube allowed a bunch of rappers to emerge from the area. Some of the big names on the trip were Impressa, Burner Bands, Houdini, Talib Twins, Robin Banks, and much more. Rappers from rival gangs also emerged, which brought problems. Gangs could now threaten the lives of music groups, mob them, diss them, whatever the case may be. This only escalated even faster. And even making way for new problems between gangs to form. Facts. A rapper just has to say one wrong thing and it's on. Some of the people who were jailed from the 2007 raid were out by this time already. The gang is fully functioning, 
the drug enterprise is running, and they're still at war with a number of different sets and have gained more enemies since the mid-2000s. The Alpha Crips are still divided into smaller groups with clicks like Wasp Gang and E Gang using music to create a buzz. This younger, new generation proves to be just as violent and ruthless as the past one. They were responsible for a high number of shootings and homicides within the city. The Driftwood Rapper, who goes by 21, being charged with the murder of a popular Regent Park rapper, Small Dog. It was a broad day shooting, proving that the gang has no boundaries or limitations when they want you dead. The Driftwood Crips seem to have a lot of issues and problems with different sets, making it seem like the gang just genuinely enjoys violence and beat. These are the type of gangs that are just highly dangerous. They shoot first and ask questions later. <laughs> Motherfucker, shoot first and get the fuck out of there. They ain't asking no questions. Three sixteen-year-old boys from Driftwood were caught in Cologne, a town where little bit east of Surrey. Three sixteen-year-olds, okay. Two loaded hands, over thirty thousand dollars in cash. They have ties with gangs in DC, like the Brothers Keeper gang, and work together to move drugs across Canada. So you're looking at a gang that is ambitious and looking to spread out and even collaborate with other gangs. That's crazy. The Driftwood Crooks never left the police radar. Law enforcement wanted to take another crack at the gang, especially with the rise of fentanyl in the city. So they began another year-long investigation and prepared a new set of raids to be dubbed Project Chronic this time. They didn't have so many goddamn projects over there. Project Marvel, Project Chronic, Project Cryptic. This time, over 800 officers and 20 police forces joined together for the project. The aftermath of the raid is over 120 people arrested and 660 charges laid, including heavy crimes such as attempted murder, trafficking firearms, kidnapping, and robberies. Unsurprisingly, 19 of those arrested were actually arrested and raised a decade before, but remained active in the gang. The seizures included 190 fentanyl patches and over 190 fentanyl pills. Over 14 handguns and a few shotguns were seized, with hundreds of rounds of ammo and over 170 grand in cash. From the investigation, they also learned that the scope of the Driftwood Crips was larger than they thought discovering they had members operating in Sudbury, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and they worked with many high-level gangs like Hell's Angels MC. This recent fire is another violent attempt by police to break down the foundation of the Driftwood Crips. On the surface, it seems like the project was successful, but it seems like just a small hit for the gang. In conclusion, this is a gang in an area that's been prominent in Toronto for decades. Right. The crime rate in the area either goes up or goes down, but it never stops. With the introduction of social media and platforms that members and rappers can post content, the beast that is again more will continue to be fed. Driftwood's latest rapper passed away was Queen, which just happened a few weeks ago, reminding us that the violence surrounding the gang continues to this day. Right. Yeah, man. Shout out to Mind Soul Six. He a real like one for this one. I swear to you, man. He gave you info up on that. So make sure y'all go tap in and watch, man. Make sure y'all go over there and subscribe, man. I see you over there growing big, growing great, man. So he gonna, I know he gonna have more dropping pretty soon. We definitely gonna be tapped in, man. And info, man. Just it's just great, crazy to see how you know what I'm saying. All this and occurred in the situations around the world, around the whole fucking planet, you know what I'm saying? We about to tap into these comments though. Let's see what these comments talking about, man. If you're a real one and you still tapped in, I appreciate you, man. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Feel free to say what you gotta say in the comments below, man. You know what I'm saying? Your opinions, man. I want your opinions on this, man. The ones that live over there, the ones that send this shit, relatives born and raised, like, man. Like, how y'all feel about this situation? And, like, man, it's just keep going, going, and going. And I've been, and I also been seeing, seeing somebody just went down. It was a rapper that uh, just got arrested. They, they trying to catch motherfuckers, man. So, 
Hey, man, y'all got to be more strategic if y'all, you know what I'm saying? Because they, they about to come even harder some way, somehow. Man. That's crazy. Oh, everything but these comments, man. They said, I was born and raised in Rexdale. I have crazy childhood stories about that shit that went down there. Man, somebody says, you got this from a rap dictionary website. <laughs> hey, shit, it ain't even a rap dictionary website. When all that shit be on the news and then you listening to the music and then you tap in, shit, and you put all that shit together, man, you got a lot of shit going on with this shit, man. Oh, um, anything. Oh, somebody said... Yo, what the fuck at 133? Those are OG downtowns, man. It's a hundred. Fake ass information. <laughs> Somebody said it's fake info, man. Hey, I'm just tapped in to seeing, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers sending me links and shit, so I'm tapping in. Like, hey, I'm getting, I'm doing reactions to the artists and shit. And I'm, they, I'm like, I'm just trying to see what's going on, just like y'all, man. Real deal, Holyfield. They said all the driftwood beef changed now. You know what I'm saying? Audric and Jungle are click with them now, and Five BG is cool with them too. Now they beef. Dixon shot up and Region, and also Rex and Down Bottom. See, it's just so much. You know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> you already know in the comments, motherfuckers always going to have something to say. They're going to have that input. Like they got, you know what I'm saying, all the info. Like they was the ones out there uh, catching bodies and shit. You know what I'm saying? Not saying they, you ain't or nothing, but I'm just saying, like, that's what motherfuckers be in the comments doing. So I ain't even, I'm just going to keep it right there and leave it right there. But shout out to the gang. Shout out to the squad. If you like this shit, man, much love to you, man. Hey. Shout out to my soul six, man. Evidently he got something going on over here, motherfuckers like, hey man, say man, this what happened, man. This how it is and this what it wasn't. But shit, it is what it is, man. It's just it's just nice to chill back and you know what I'm saying? Get on history info about this shit. We about to get on mafias. We about to get on all type of info about this shit. Long time ago info, man. Just just chill back, you know what I'm saying? That's what YouTube about, man. So Shout out to the gang, shout out to the squad, man. Much love to you. We out.